Welcome to LDO Off-Road. I'm Zach Eastwood. Today we're going to build a rear bumper and tire carrier kit for the Land Cruiser. I bought this kit online from 4x4 Labs and I really like the design. So let's get started. So here are the parts from the kit. Uh, they're all plasma cut and bent to shape and then basically we put it together and weld it up and, uh, and then do our own paint. So the 4x4 Labs website has some instructions that are step by step and uh, they even did a post on the MUD forum to also show pictures of each step of assembling the bumper kit. So that's what I'm following and uh, the purpose of my video is not to teach you how to weld or how to finish the bumper um, as far as paint or whatever you're going to do. Um, but I want to show you kind of my experience of building this kit and uh, if you're considering a similar kit or the same kit, uh, maybe this video will be helpful to you. So one of the first steps in building this bumper is removing this spare tire mounting bracket. There's three bolts that go into the frame on each side and uh, I sprayed them with PB Blaster a number of times leading up to this project so I was able to break them loose pretty easy and so now I'm just gonna pull them out and drop this bracket. By the way I think they want you to keep these bolts for when you mount the bumper. Well, it doesn't want to come down. I'm sure it's just because it's been there for 30 years. Got it. Okay, so now I've got the rear tire carrier removed. And so I'm going to work on removing this cross member here by grinding the welds here and back in here, top and bottom, both sides, and get that piece out of there. So for each of these welds, I just ground the weld. It kind of went at a little bit of an angle to cut into where it penetrated between the two. And then I'm gonna move your camera here. And then I'm gonna see if I can use a pry bar, oops, sorry, to, uh, if I can position it in there, to kind of pop the weld loose. There, see how that's loose now? And I'll do that on each, each side, or on each weld. Now, on this one inside here, where this cross piece goes, I can't get the grinder in there, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna start grinding on the truck accidentally. So I'm gonna see if I can use a Sawzall. In this one here. So I think I can take a long metal cutting Sawzall blade and kinda hook it under this piece here and cut that way to cut out the weld. So let's try it out. <laughs> uh, that blade didn't last. It is working, I just need a new blade. Okay, that last blade was old and used up. I, I'm not too surprised it broke. Let's try this again. Well, I liked how that went on that side with the Sawzall. I'm going to try it again on this side. Everything's 
and so it's all good here. So I just noticed that uh, there's also, sorry about the shadows, there's also welds on the inside here, not just top and bottom. This is on the diagonal piece inside here. So you gotta cut that loose as well. So this, this weld is kind of a bump on the frame. I'm going to grind that smooth. Okay, so while I was under here, I just cleaned up the surface. There was a little bit of surface rust where the tire carrier mounted to the frame. And there was also just some kind of gunky silicone type of stuff, or I don't know what it was, but I just ground it smooth. And I'll, I'll paint this with like a rust reform or a primer. Um, before we actually mount the bumper. I did the same thing on this side over here. So I need to be able to mark and cut this frame according to the instructions, but this bracket here for the plastic bumper piece is in the way of that mark and that cut. So I think I'm just gonna grind or cut these welds and get this bracket off of there so I can work on the frame without the obstruction. There's another weld on there, but I'm just gonna see if this will bend loose. We're cutting off the back end of this, so I don't need this to be in great condition over here. I just want this bracket out of the way. Well, that's mostly out of the way. I'm just going to rip that off. Okay, so I've got this bracket off of here and cleaned up. Well, mostly cleaned up. And uh, then I got a white line on there, you can see. This is according to his instructions. Uh, two and seven eighths inch from this body mount here. You draw a vertical line and you cut that line. And then on the instructions it shows also this little angle cut here. Um, but I'm gonna do that after the vertical cut because I wanna make sure that I'm keeping, I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's a nut here and there's another one behind it. This one will get removed with this cut, but the one behind it, we want to keep. So we'll cut the vertical line and then we'll do this little angle cut here and make sure that that nut that's right about here stays in there and I'm not cutting through the nut. Same thing on that other side. Okay, I'm going to cut this. I got a shorter sawzall blade um, and I'm watching out for the body up here I want to make sure this doesn't hit the body I put like a little nick in it with the grinder and I did that just so the blade doesn't like trying to find the line it's just a little easier for it to start I'm hoping well maybe not Okay, so we got our cut, and you can see the nut we want to keep on the inside there. And so I made a mark here on the side, 
and according to the instructions, he, he wants you to go up an inch and three eighths. And then the instructions say to measure back from the from the uh, the body mount, which is on the other side here. It's just a little easier to, for me to get at because the tailpipe's not in the way. But what I did is I measured. I want to make sure that I'm keeping that nut. So I measured in here and took that measurement and kind of transferred it to this side, but a little less so I can keep a little bit of steel in front of that nut. And uh, I think I'll use the grinder here. It's gonna be hard to get a start with the Sawzall on that angle. So I think we'll just use the grinder. So the next thing we need to cut is the exhaust pipe. It sticks out too far, it's gonna get in the way of the new bumper. And so the instructions to say to cut it off here, they've got a nice picture on their instructions. Looks close to this cap on the frame, so I'm gonna cut right here and then put a little angle cut on it as well. We're also going to cut off the bracket that's holding the end up here. <clears throat> so we're going to remove this mount for the tailpipe. And uh, mine's been welded back on. Um, and so I'm going to try and remove this bracket later, but these bolts are pretty rusty. So I'm going to come back to it with an impact. I sprayed it with PV Blaster, but until then, just to get this out of the way, I'm just going to cut the the rubbery mounts here, um, just so I can get it out of the way. So this does make the tailpipe hang pretty loose. Uh, there needs to be some kind of strap here, so I'm gonna keep that in mind before I drive away. I'm gonna, you know, put something here on the on the frame here, or maybe back here. Um, we'll figure that out after the bumper's in here. That way, I know what's covered and what's not by the bumper parts. Um, but that probably needs to get wired up or bracketed up in some way before we drive off-road or anywhere. Okay, so now we've got the frame prepped and ready for the new bumper parts. The new bumper parts bolt onto these two bolt-threaded 
uh, nuts here under the frame on either side. And then also the three that go in the, in the side here that were for the tire carrier. So that's five on each side. And what I did is I actually got some thread chasers. Of course, I matched the threads to these metric threads and I ran those chasers in there with some lube uh, just to make sure that any rust and stuff was cleared out of those bolt holes and everything will uh, thread together like it should. All right, so I'm gonna put the first uh, shell up here and get it temporarily bolted up there. I'm not going to tighten any of them down because uh, we want to be able to move things around, but just get everything threaded in and lined up. That one seems a little like it needs a little bit of room. Just make sure these are loose enough that I can move stuff around. Much better. Okay, so whoop, wrong way. I'm gonna go ahead and snug them up and uh, I may have to loosen them in, in a little while when we go to fit the rest of the pieces together, but. This is at least where it ought to go. Oops, keep doing that. Okay. So I just wanted to make a note here that um, this is cut back plenty. I, I haven't put the bumper on here yet, um, but so far it looks like I got plenty of room here. Um, I did, yeah, so I don't need to cut it back any further. Okay, so I put the the bumper piece on there. I just It just sets right on and kind of sits on these. But as you can see, uh, it's lining up here, but it's not lining up down here on the bottom. Uh, this is lining up this way but it needs to push down quite a bit same on this side so now i'm going to loosen up the bolts on those shells and see if i can move things around and make everything fit like it should and then uh, that's where we'll end up tacking it so i'm going to start try that now Okay, so I loosened the bolts and I let everything shift and pushed it around a little bit. And now uh, things line up a lot better than they did. Still a little bit of gap. Um, so I'm going to decide now if I need to shift it some more or if I need to grind some points to get these gaps to close up. I can fill a little bit of gap, but I don't want to fill, you know, like an eighth of an inch gap. So. Uh, I'm going to keep fiddling around with it until we can get it lined up to a place where I'm comfortable with it. So I'm trying to evaluate whether or not I can close up these gaps a little bit more. One thing I'm noticing is that here, you can't see it very well in the camera, but the bottom edge of this piece of metal, the one inside there, is touching here. And that means there's a little bit of a gap here. And I wonder if I ground that if I use the grinder and grind off that edge that's down under here, if that would allow this gap to close up a little bit, they'd be able to get closer together. So that's one thing I might address. Another thing I'm noticing, if you go inside under the bumper here, this is the, that's the shell, and you can see it's cut to the shape of the bumper. And you, again, you can't see this very well in the camera. Hold on a second. 
But up in here, there's just a little bit of a gap. It touches tight here, but there's a little gap here, a little gap around here, and then a big gap here. So if I can get close up this gap by pushing the bumper down, then maybe this whole thing will kind of wrap around and get tighter in here. And if that works, then that would allow this gap in here to get tighter. So I'm going to try that first. I'm going to see if I can get this bumper to conform to the to the shape of the shell and uh, see if that closes it up. And if that doesn't completely do it, then we'll look at grinding this away to close up that gap. Okay, so I spent some time loosening the bolts, moving things around, tightening the bolts, pounding on it with the hammer, and I think I've got it where I want. I did do a little grind in here on each side um, to allow this to close up a little bit. I honestly am not sure if it helped that much, um, but in any case, the, it's pretty close, and we'll have to do a little bit of filling with the welding, but um, I think overall we're sitting pretty good. I'll show you inside in case you're interested. Um, the light you see there is, is that hole, but everything fits pretty tight. The, uh, the shell conforms to the shape of the bumper there, and uh, I think that's going to go together well. So, uh, I think we're ready to tack weld it, and, uh, and then pull it off the vehicle and fully weld it. I've got it tack welded in a number of places so I'm going to unbolt it and pull it off the truck so we can fit some more parts before welding it up. So now I'm putting together the uh, the towing cross member and uh, and the receiver. So here we have the cross member fits across here, and it sits three quarters of an inch down from this edge on both sides. And then the receiver slides in to the bumper. You can't see it very well because it's there's a shadow there, but it slides in and it just sticks out just a little bit. Enough for you to get a good weld on there. And, on, and that's how you know how deep this goes. When, it, when these two touch, they should be flush on the top, but there should be, I'm sure you can't see it, but uh, this one is two and a half inches, this is two inches, so it's gonna hang down a half inch down on the bottom, and that's how it's supposed to be, flush on the top. Then I just used a tape, and I measured from this point to this point, and then again on this side, just to make sure that the cross member is parallel with the bumper. And, uh, and then I measured from this point to this side of the receiver, and again on this side, just to make sure that this is square and those two measurements are the same. Then we can tack that in position. After that, we've got these gussets, and they fit inside here, like this, one on each side of the receiver and uh, that acts as strength as well as a place to hook your chains for when you're towing.
So next I'm going to put these recovery points in here. And they slide into the slot, obviously, and butt up against the, the towing cross member. And as I'm looking at it, there's just not a lot of room, so I, I got a, a bow shackle here, whatever you want to call it, D-ring. And when I, when I put it in there, just not a lot of room. It's actually rubbing up against the bumper. And I don't want it to be difficult to get that off and on. So, so what I could have done different was position all of this that way, a quarter inch. That would have made the receiver stick out a little further. You could do that. I'm already tacked in. I can't really change that very easily. So what I'm going to do is get, just get some quarter inch flat bar and I'll use it like a spacer and I'll weld it in here and then push this up against that and that'll stick it out an extra quarter of an inch and I like that better. So that's what I'm going to do. We've got everything tacked together, except the last thing is to put these tubes on, on the fender there, and uh, that's best to do on the truck. That's what the instructions say. Makes sense to me. So now we're going to, now we got it all tacked together, we're going to put it back on the truck, make sure it still fits, and that nothing moved on us or warped on us, and then we'll fit these on and tack these on. Okay, I've got these tubes fit the way I want them. Uh, they do give you extra length on either end, and this end is pre-cut at a 45. And so you really could put it however you want. You know, if you want it on the inside of this or sitting on the outside, if you want it sticking out here a little more, you, you could do whatever you want. I decided I wanted to follow this and I wanted to stay clear of the spindle for the swing outs. Uh, so, I cut probably an inch and a half off of this end. On this end, I probably only cut about a half inch, but I, I did have to change that angle. This is not a 45 compared to this. So um, in either case, I just held it up and put a little mark, kind of eyeballed it, and then cut it. And here I did the same thing. I held it up here, and then I just put kind of a level line, and that's what how I found my angle, basically. On this one, I had to kind of go back and forth and grind a little more and grind a little more until it fit the way I wanted. And there still is a little bit of a gap. I probably took too much on this end and I'll have to fill it with weld. The other end came out a lot closer, probably because I did it second. The other thing is the end here is open, the end of the tube, as you can see. So I'll have to cap that off because I don't want water or mud or anything going inside there and causing rust later on. But anyway, these are ready to go. I'm going to tack them on there. And uh, after that, we can pull the bumper off and weld it up. And that really is the, that's it for uh, assembling the bumper itself. So for whatever reason, this is just running into my fender flare here. So I just decided I'm going to go ahead and cut it back so it clears. And I want to bring it back far enough that I can still get the bar on there and they all line up and miss the fender flare.
So as I was digging through the kit parts, I found these little caps and they go on the ends of these tubes right there. So that's perfect. All right, we've got the bumper pulled back off the truck, obviously, and we're ready to weld it up. I'm gonna stitch weld it uh, in a number of different places, let it cool, come back and weld some more, and that way I don't deal with it getting too hot and warping and twisting. I don't want that to happen, obviously. It'll make it hard to get back on the truck. So, here we go. <laughs> spent a lot of time grinding it, getting these welds nice and smooth on the outside here. And I, I think I got all the splatter taken off of it and it's looking good. And I went ahead and put it back on the truck. Obviously it's not painted yet and that's because we've still got more to do with the tire swing outs. If you didn't order a bumper with tire swing outs, you would be done and ready to paint. Um, but I've got two of these swing outs and this is the spindle for that, and we're gonna get ready to install that now. So the spindle has this bevel cut on the bottom of it, and that matches the angle of the bottom of this bumper. So this should slide in, and you can kind of twist it until it rests with that bevel matching the angle on the bottom of the bumper. Now, in order for me to get mine in there, this hole was just a little bit tight, so I used a round file, and I just kind of filed that down. It really didn't take very much, and then I could slide this in there. So the instructions say that uh, this lip here, the shoulder of that, should be at least three quarters of an inch off the surface of the bumper. Mine shows 13 sixteenths, which is just a little higher than three quarters, and that's what we want. At least three quarters of an inch. So, now I'm gonna to go to the next stage. I suppose that if yours was not at least three quarters of an inch higher than the bumper, you might need to twist it in such a way that that bevel on the bottom was raising it up higher or you could put a spacer underneath to get it where you want. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is assemble the spindle shell on the spindle with all the bearings and seals. There's a great picture on the 4x4 Labs website that shows a cutaway view of this and all the different pieces that go in there and how they're laid out. I could not find a written instructions anywhere, um, so I went off of that diagram. Uh, now, I did grease the bearings. I just felt like, well, they're bearings, and bearings are usually greased. I don't know if that's what everybody else does, but that's what I did. I didn't tighten this down real hard yet. I just snugged it up and made sure that this could spin freely. After you get the spindle assembled with the bearings and the seal, and you've got the shell on there, you want to drop it back inside the hole in the bumper. Before I did this, I put a mark on the spindle and on the bumper here to remember how I had it lined up. And I lined it up with that mark when I dropped it in here. And then you can spin this shell until this lower section here, this kind of a tooth, is facing directly out, away from the bumper. Then I put these 90 degree magnets in here. You don't have to use magnets. You could use uh, speed square or whatever you want, and you get it perfectly square with the bumper. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tack the spindle, not the shell, the spindle to the bumper. One idea I have is there's this access hole right here, and I'm gonna see if I can get a tack right in there on the base of the spindle to the bumper. 
The other option would be to try and reach in there and do it there. And I, I'm afraid I'm gonna have a hard time reaching there. So I'm gonna start here. And then I've gotta disassemble all of this so that I can tack weld the spindle back to the bumper. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the spindle shell and the bearings so that I can weld the spindle to the bumper. Now I just want to make a note that I'm doing this with the bumper on the truck. You don't have to do that. In fact, it might be easier to access all this stuff if you're able to set this on a bench or saw horses or something like that. I just chose to do it on the truck because I thought it might be a little easier. Um, most likely I'll end up taking it off later to finish weld everything. So I decided to just tack weld it until I can get it off the truck and do a good finish weld all the way around, make it look clean and nice without dealing with the body of the truck in my way. Okay, so I took the bumper off the truck and I've got it on these saw horses and I went ahead and finish welded all the way around on these and then on the inside here, you can't see very well, but I welded as much as I could down there as well. Oh, hi Red. I also, just so you know, I'm doing this side at the same time. So now that this is done being finish welded, I can put the spindle shell back on and uh, that'll allow, allow us to go to the next step, which is putting the arms on. If you have two swing arms, you should notice that they're different. This side is curved and this is what mates up against the spindle shell. And so you can see that these bolt holes, which is where you bolt on the accessories, are in different positions. The one with the bolt holes further from the spindle is for the spare tire because it pushes the tire out towards the more towards the middle of the car uh, and this one is for the other side whether it's your ladder or your gas cans or whatever so you want to think about that when you decide which side you're going to put on the left and which sides on the right typically you put your spare tire on the driver's side uh, and so this one would go on the driver's side of the bumper the next thing we're gonna do is attach these swing arms. And so you want one inch of clearance here. And so I found that my four foot level is exactly one inch. I use that as a spacer and I stuck that underneath. Then on the back side of these is a straight edge that I clamped to both swing arms so that they're perfectly in line with each other. And then you can kind of see here, I've got one of my magnets that makes this sit 90 degrees on the back side here to the bumper itself. All of these things are just holding it in place and I can tack these to the spindle shells. Just a reminder, the little tooth, the little notchy hang down thing here, you want that facing directly out.
The next thing we're going to do is position the stops that stop these swing arms and uh, keep them at the closed position. So this piece here, you really can put it wherever you want, technically, um, but I just put it, I lined it up straight at the back of the swing arms uh, with enough room for the stops that weld to the swing arms to still fit in there. Just to remind you, there's a straight edge on the back side of these two swing arms to make them square and flush with each other and straight. And uh, that, that helps you put that in the right place. Then after you get that tacked in, then you're going to do the stops that go on the swing arm themselves. And I found that I had to grind down this corner. It was a little bit too tall to fit in there. So I just smoothed it out. And now that should go in there. And I'm going to tack it wherever it touches that stop. So now we're going to set the stops for the open position of the swing arms. For, the, for all the normal accessories like the tire carrier and the gas can holder and all those things, you really only need to set these at 95 degrees in order to clear the hatch on the truck. But if you're going to set up the ladder, you need to set it up to 125 degrees. I'm not going to do a ladder. I don't, I don't see doing that. So I'm going to set up both of mine at 95 degrees. The way you do that is you, you need to have some kind of an angle finder. And I have an angle finder and then I set this to match that. You could use the angle finder. Uh, I just like this because it's easier for me to handle. Anyway, this is set at 95 degrees, and if I set it here against the bumper, and then you can see here, I set the swing arm to match the same angle. Once you've got this, the right angle set, then here's your stop. And you can see the tooth here on the spindle shelf, and it pushes up against it, and you just set it at so that this is at 90 degrees right here. And that'll stop it from swinging any further. So we're gonna tack that in place, and then this one's done. I'll do the same thing on the other side. If you have a ladder set up, uh, you're gonna wanna set that one to 125 degrees. This is the latch that goes on the swing arms and, and uh, clamps them together. But obviously these bolt holes here on these wings is way too wide for the swing arm. So we're going to disassemble this assembly and then cut off these bolt holes so that all we have left is the kind of the, the main part of it there. And then we've got a plate that we can weld to the swing arm. All right, so I cut these off the sides of the latch, and then I've got it clamped in place. And then the hook side of the latch, I've got it clamped in place. And uh, the U-bolt is adjustable, so it should clamp on that still. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and tack this in position, and then I'll test it out and make sure that it works uh, before I finish weld it. Okay, so I reassembled it just to test it out, and it uh, works good. You can tighten it down here, obviously, but the latch and everything works good. So I'm going to go ahead and finish weld those. So now we're going to cap the ends of the swing arms. One thing you want to pay attention to is you want to make sure that you've got enough clearance between these for both these caps. If you don't have enough clearance or if you're nervous about it, I guess that you could cut these to fit inside of the tube and then weld it so that it would be inset rather than capped on the top on the outside. I think I've got enough clearance. I'm going to weld it on the outside. Okay, so I changed my mind. There's really not very much clearance if you put the cap on the top. So I ground it to fit and cut it so it could fit inside of the tube. And now it's flush. I'm holding it on with this magnet and I can weld it in place.
The next thing we're going to do is put the sleeves inside the swing arm bolt holes. So I've got one tap, tapped in there. I did have to tap it with the hammer and to get it in there. Uh, but we'll put them all in and then we'll weld them and grind them off smooth. Okay, so we're going to place these ball studs for the gas shocks. And the, the one on the bumper here goes two and a quarter inches from the spindle two and a quarter inches over and you should put it just up from this rounded section here and then on the swing arm I've got this turned upside down okay so this is the bottom side and you're gonna measure 12 inches from the spindle shell to where the hole goes and you're gonna put it on the inside edge remember this is upside down okay so the towards the vehicle edge and that's where you'll drill your hole to put this ball stud you're gonna to want to drill it and tap it so that you can thread that in there I suppose you could cut that off and weld it or drill the hole shove it in there and then weld it but if you ever had to remove it, it'd be pretty difficult to do, so I'm just going to drill and tap it. So, word to the wise, this would have been easier to do before I welded in the spindle because the typical tap handle can't spin around, it hits the spindle. So, uh, I'm forced to use a different method of course they don't make a socket with a square shape like that so I got a quarter inch drive socket and then I have a Allen head socket that fits in that and and now I can do this uh, if you end up doing it the same method as I am remember that you've got a lot more torque on a handle like this so don't break your stud remember to go back and forth uh, thread it in and then back out again to clean it out before you go forward again. Okay, so the gas shocks are built a little long, which is fine. It just means that when it's on there, it'll be compressed a little bit. But these are really hard to press. So I can't get it on there. So I'm gonna try to do something else. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda halfway remove the spindle here so that I can get the stop, so I can kinda get over the top of the, the stop back here. And then kinda, I'll go a little, a little far. And get it oh there we go there's like a little pin here to lock it in okay and now I'll press on it until it gets on the stop or past the stop is what I mean to say truck so oh that's cool and because of where we positioned the uh, the ball studs there's a, a cam action that basically now the shock is holding it closed and I have to pull on it to get it to start and then it opens and it stays open and then I'm pressing here but watch it'll take it from there and it wants to keep it closed. So that's awesome. So here's just a couple tips that I came up with. When welding around the spindle, uh, either for the stop or the spindle itself, I really didn't want to get weld splatter on this. 
uh, on the spindle. And so I just cut the top off of a pop can and slip it over there and that'll protect it. There's an idea for you. Another thing I found is when I was welding the sleeves that go inside the swing arms here, uh, I at first I had the same setting as on my welder as I was welding on all of this thick steel and it was it was just really melting this down inside the hole. So I backed off the setting on my welder and, and that worked a lot better. Now of course I still have to grind over this and any slag or anything that gets inside the hole I'll just have to clean out with a drill bit. Um, but by lowering the setting on my welder I think that helped this out a little bit. So I finished welding up the bumper and the swing outs and now I'm going to move on to the spare tire mount accessory. So the first step is to weld this upright to the clamp bracket. So I went ahead and just stuck it on the swing arm and bolted it through there just so I can see how it's going to fit. And then I went ahead and set up kind of a jig a block of wood that holds it up as high as I want it as well as a block back here to give it the right angle. Um, this upright piece is cut with an angle on it um, but the angle this way is not a true 90 degree cut and so you really need to use a square to make sure that it's sitting square to the clamp bracket. The next thing we're going to do is put these gussets in here and the instructions say to actually put it at somewhat of an angle like this. I think probably because it adds strength um, in multiple directions if we put it at an angle. But these also look a little bit bigger than what I'm seeing in the pictures on the written instructions. And it just isn't quite fitting. So I think what I'm going to do is cut, grind the bottom at that angle so that I can get it to fit. Okay, so I cut a bit of an angle on there. I'll show you what it looks like. And that allows me to turn it diagonally and still uh, hit that vertical the way it's supposed to. I think that's gonna work pretty good. Okay, so this is the clamp assembly and I've clamped it to the upright just to uh, get it set up so I know exactly where I want it positioned. There's an eighth inch thick plate that goes on first to cap the top of this upright. I, I figured out where I wanted to put it and then I actually tacked it into position front and back just so it wouldn't wiggle around on me while I get all this set up. And then I, I actually put a couple of washers just as spacers on top of that plate under this so that when it's all welded up I've got just a little bit of room obviously I'll take the washers out and then I'll have a little bit of play so that this slides in and out with a little bit of a little bit of freedom there also that will account for any thickness of paint or powder coating or whatever you put on there okay next I tacked the square tube to the clover that's what they call that I did it on the angled side and on the other side is where we my kit came with uh, the high lift jack bracket and it can go on the back there. You do have to push that wheel stud there through yourself and then that goes on there and I guess you got to decide what angle you want to put that at. Um, you could either make a wild guess or put it on the on the bumper on the truck and uh, and figure out how it fits best for you. So I'm all finished welding the bumper, the swing outs and the spare tire accessory. I did some grinding, wire wheeling and got it all cleaned up. Now it's primed, then I paint it and I can put it on the truck. I hope that was helpful to you. I'm Zach Eastwood and this is LDO Off-Road. Thanks for watching.
Then, come on again. Come on. Come on. Good oh boy. Stay off. Off. <laughs> you like it up here? Okay, come down. Come on, let's go. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. Come on. Come on. Okay, good boy. Stay off. Off. <laughs> What's your deal? Alright. Ready? Come on, get back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Stay there. Ha, ha, ha.